Namaste everyone and welcome back to Live Stronger. Today we are going to work on our leg strength again. Straight away I am going to start with the greatest stretch. 5 repetitions on each side. Unlocking my mobility for the day, for the workout. Make sure you squeeze your glutes as strongly as possible to create that hip stretch and the inner thigh stretch. Go down as low as possible and at every stretch make sure you hold for a couple of seconds that's more than sufficient holding it for more than 10 to 15 seconds is totally unnecessary for dynamic stretching just a couple of seconds of hold and we are good to go post completing my greatest stretch routine i went into my deep squat routine the consistency is what helps us better it every day so you have to do it on a regular basis to help you get better on it so for deep squat we hinge forward by pushing our glutes as far behind as possible and once our hamstrings are stretched we go into a deep squat stay there for few seconds at least five to ten seconds and once we start feeling our inner thigh stretch we push our body weight onto one ankle at a time improving our ankle mobility too so here if you have any kind of tightness your heels will start coming off the ground so you can do some massaging of your calf muscles to improve your ankle mobility also post completing my deep squat i moved into my hip stretch which is basically the hip opener stretch which i perform on regular basis during our leg days one leg on your knee basically your knee down on one leg and one leg on the opposite side stretch get your knee over your toe feel the stretch in your inner thigh the important part is to squeeze your glutes again here get your hips straight and then push your knee over your toes and feel the stretch happening a great way to start our mobility work ensure that our hips open up if you have any kind of restrictions, again any tightness, you would definitely feel it during this uh, drill. And if that exists, the area where you feel tightness, try foam rolling or massaging to relieve some tension and try the stretch again to see any kind of improvement. If it doesn't improve immediately, you might need a few days of foam rolling and massaging the area to improve the flexibility or the stretchability of the area a little bit. Post completing my hip stretches, again I did 5 repetitions of these on each side. I went on to do the warm up exercise for the day, the squats, empty bubble warm up. Also did few seconds of deep uh, squat holds for 3 to 4 seconds, that's more than sufficient. Make sure you take a stance wherein you, fa you keep your toes open, basically your toes point outwards not straight keeping them straight keeps your hips rotated in opening them a little bit opens your hips also allows you to go through the external and internal motion a little bit more easily if you're someone who are not able to go deeper but don't feel any kind of restriction maybe widen your stance that might help you a little bit going a little bit more deeper post completing two sets of a warm-up i moved on to my working sets where i have done four sets 10 repetitions with 60 seconds rest in between as you can see in the video with or without weight my motion of the squat always remains the same even as I'm increasing the weight the barbell movement remains almost the same there is very little deviation from the barbell path and that is what we need to ensure while progressing the weight if you take a weight wherein your barbell starts swaying forward or backward you need to step down Keep practicing the weight where you can have absolute control over the barbell and then only step up once you feel confident that there is no swaying movement. You can always record yourself to see the barbell's path. It has to be as straight as possible as you can see here in the videos. Very simple technique I always use is to squeeze my glutes before going down to get my hips straight and then go down. Post completing my squats I have done two sets of calf races the reason why i have done calf races on my leg day is because i haven't done that on my previous workout because my calves were a little bit sore i gave them some time to recover and today i felt them felt they were better so i went on to do my donkey calf races i've done two sets of these 
12 to 15 repetitions but with 4 second hold at contraction and at stretch. The important part is to hold. Again, as I mentioned earlier, I used to rush through them by going multiple repetitions by going up to 25 to 30 repetitions but I was not getting the optimum results which I aim to get. So I learned that if I slow down the contractions as much as possible, I would be able to get a better uh, working of my calf muscles, basically eliminate the involvement of my tendons. So make sure you hold four seconds at every rep at the contraction point where your heels are up and at the stretch point where heels are completely down. After completing two sets of this, I was only uh, taking about 45 seconds rest in between. Because this is also a leg based exercise, you need to definitely take a rest in between the squats, the calf exercise and the next hamstring exercise which we are going to do because all will affect similar uh, muscles or the entire chain of leg muscles. So I would recommend taking at least a minute's break in between maybe even up to two minutes to recover completely especially after squats you would be a little bit tired so make sure you take your two minute break and then go into your calf muscles. Once done with your calf muscles you can take a minute's break and then move into your hamstring muscles. Make sure you lock out your knees. Make sure you keep your knees as uh, straight as possible to ensure that there is no leak of energy. Your calves don't have any play area. That would ensure optimum contraction. Post completing my donkey calf races, I moved on to my seated hamstring curls. 5 sets, 10 repetitions. Started with alternative leg but very quickly realized that I was absolutely tired post completing my squats and calves. So I just loaded heavier weights and started doing both legs at a time for my second, third and fourth and fifth sets. I've done 10 repetitions in each set, took about 45 to 60 seconds break in between. For my fifth set, I was not able to achieve the 10 repetitions because I hit absolute failure there. So I was only able to get five to six repetitions. I did not try to use the rest pause technique because that was my last set and I really did feel that I came to very close absolute failure. So I did not push any harder because that would not give me any better results. I have already done my job in terms of working the muscle as hard as possible. So if you're going both legs, instead of going alternative leg, you can obviously load heavier weight and try to get maximum repetitions out of it. As you can see here, I fail just about the fifth or the sixth repetition. I was so focused on the repetitions that I forgot to count them. So I was not able to get a full contraction. So I just stopped. Post completing my hamstrings, I moved on to do my plank. Now the reason why I'm doing this plank regularly is to improve a lot more of my core stability and core work. Remember we don't do planks to obtain abs. The abs will come through diet and nutrition following a good balanced nutrition is how you get abs. We do planks to ensure we build our core strength, work our core muscles, get them stronger which will help us in all kind of complex movements like squats, deadlifts, you know anything wherein our core is demanded a lot more and also keeps our lower back a lot more safer because then we are now training all our muscles to work together and ensure that our core becomes stronger. Target your plank for at least a minute. If you're unable to do it on a BOSU ball like I'm doing here, because that creates a little bit of instability and more challenge, you can do it as a straight plank. I can do a straight plank for more than a minute. So I chose to up my challenge by putting on a, myself on a BOSU ball. So after completing our plank, we are done with our daily exercises. We move on to our static stretches. Now for static stretches, I'm doing the regular stretches, which is first the quad stretch wherein we place our feet on at a support and then try to get as straight as possible stretching our quads from the origin and the insertion points the quads originate just at our pelvic bone and goes and inserts at our knee so 
by keeping our knee locked in and slowly standing as straight as possible creates the stretch in between our quads. Make sure you hold every stretch for 20 seconds, 15 seconds minimum, but 20 seconds is what works for me best. I feel optimum amount of stretch. If you feel that you're not feeling it much, you can definitely do it the second time. Third time, I don't see the necessity. Two times of a particular stretch is more than sufficient. But if you still feel tightness, definitely choose to do a little bit of foam rolling. That would relieve more tension than doing multiple number of stretches on a same muscle. The uh, important part here is to make sure you stand as straight as possible in line. Basically, it's not just standing straight because here, since the support which I'm using to put my rest, my foot is a little bit inclined, I need to incline myself also to get into a straight line. Post doing my quad stretches, I just increased the height of the support and moved on to my hamstring stretches, making sure that you'll be able to still see it properly. For hamstrings, again, the simple stretch, just place your foot at an elevated height and then either bend forward, basically pulling your glutes away from your hamstrings or you can also bring your toes towards your shins that pulls your calf muscles since your calf muscles also connect with your hamstrings you would also feel a good amount of stretch in your hamstrings but bending forward or pushing your glutes far back as far back as possible is also a good way to exaggerate the stretch the way you progress the stretch is basically increasing the height of the support you're using to rest your foot on now at this level i feel a good amount of stretch at sometimes i raise the height sometimes i don't but at this level i do feel a good amount of stretch so i don't necessarily increase it much so that's it for today if you did like this workout simple easy leg workout please drop a like if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel do subscribe any comments for feedback is more than welcome i would definitely respond to it thank you so much for joining me i hope you had a great workout the cues are really helping you i will see you in the next video wherein we will train on our push strength again so see you in the next video have a good day